So I got a text today from my dear friend Randy, and Randy said, how do I stop these blanking pop-ups? Randy is, of course, referring to her version of Windows. We'll use Windows 7 in this particular example, and I can't say exactly what she said because this is a family show. But suffice it to say that pop-ups are a huge annoyance in Windows. Let's see two ways in which we're going to stop these annoying pop-ups. The first thing you need to do, your first line of defense against pop-ups is the pop-up blocking software inside your browser. Today in Windows, I see Internet Explorer being used, or Firefox, or Google's Chrome. Let's make sure we understand the pop-up blocking configuration in all three of these major browsers. First, Internet Explorer. Here I am in Internet Explorer, and I'm going to click on this gears icon in the top right corner, and we're going to go to Internet Options. On the Internet Options window, if we go over to Security, actually Privacy, there we go, on the Privacy tab, we'll have a section that says Pop-Up Blocker. Notice my Pop-Up Blocker is turned on. Excellent. If you go into settings, by the way, you can add particular websites that you want pop-ups to be permitted from. So no, I notice I do a lot with Cisco, I do a lot with Microsoft, and I want pop-ups from those particular websites. Notice also, I don't play a sound when a pop-up is blocked, that annoys me to death, and I will have a notification bar pop-up. What's nice is, if you get a notification bar indicating that a pop-up was blocked and then you realize you want that pop-up, Microsoft's Internet Explorer gives you a chance to dynamically allow pop-ups from that website in the future. So these settings work very well inside Internet Explorer. What about if you're using Google's Chrome? Well, you're going to go to the top right again and here you can access the settings. It's a little buried, the settings for pop-up blocking, though. So here we are at settings. we got to scroll down, choose advanced settings, and then just like in Internet Explorer, we're interested in privacy. Go under privacy to content setting, and then scroll down and we'll find pop-ups. Notice by default, allow all sites to show pop-ups is selected. We can change this to do not allow any site to show pop-ups. And then just like with Internet Explorer, we can add particular sites that we want to be exceptions. And just like with Internet Explorer, we are alerted by Chrome when a pop-up is blocked and we have the option to allow pop-ups from that particular site in the future. So there you have it in Google's Chrome, similar settings to Internet Explorer, just a bit buried. And now here we have Firefox. If you're using Firefox, your settings are all the way on the left. <laughs> so for the last two browsers, we came over here to the right. Now we want to go all the way to the left. You'll notice this drop down. And here under the drop down, we have options. And then you can choose options. How's that for redundant? So options, options from the drop down. This brings us to this window where you have a bunch of buttons up here to control settings. And we don't want to go to privacy like we did with the other browsers. We go to content. Notice block pop-up windows is a default selection. And you have an exceptions area where you can go and add exceptions to Firefox. So for the big three browsers, Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Google's Chrome, we see that there is built-in pop-up blocking software. But now I know what you're thinking. Okay, Anthony, I was well aware of that. I went in and did those settings, I'm still experiencing pop-ups. Well, here's the problem now. You most likely have what's called adware and spyware on your system. And I know what you're thinking, well, I have a virus checker. Well, sometimes your virus checker will not thoroughly clean up the adware that is installed on your particular system that is generating the ads that you see that are circumventing the pop-up blockers inside your browsers. So what you can do is find a good and oftentimes free program that will rip out this adware also generically termed malware, stuff that's been downloaded to your PC that's not necessarily a virus, it's not destroying anything, it's just doing bad stuff as far as annoying you. Adware specifically is software that is displaying ads to you.
Super Anti-Spyware is one great example. Terrible name, I think, but it is a great example of a tool that will go in and grab this adware. Notice there is portable versions, educational versions, professional editions, but what you're probably going to be interested in is the free edition. And they're going to do everything they can as you install and use this to try and convince you to purchase it. Just be aware of what you're clicking on. Notice it just downloaded the executable, but when I run that executable, it may try and kind of lure me into the four money version. So just be aware that you're making the collect correct selections if you don't plan on spending a penny on this protection. By the way, if you're really excited by this program, you may want to investigate the for money version that gives you additional functionality. Another great tool that has a free version is AVG. AVG's antivirus free edition for 2014 does indeed go after adware. What both of these programs will often catch is they'll catch extensions that have been added to your browser, by the way. If here we're in Chrome, if I go up to Chrome and I go into settings and then over here on the left, I click extensions, what will happen is oftentimes you'll have adware related extensions that are installed in your browser. And these tools like AVG and Super Anti-Spyware, they'll literally say, hey, you've got a malicious, a bad extension to your browser, and that's why your pop-ups are getting through. Even though you've got a pop-up blocker, you have this extension that's been installed inside of your browser that's actually showing you that content that's annoying you. So as an added bonus tip in this micro nugget, let me just show you where these extensions are. Again, for Chrome, we're seeing how easy it is to see the extensions. And notice you could disable or delete extensions that you're not familiar with or that might be malicious. Let's see where these exist in Internet Explorer. In Internet Explorer, we're going to click on our gears once again, and we'll go to manage add-ons. And this is a great, great area for showing you all the added stuff to your web browser. And it's a lot of times you're going to find stuff in here you absolutely don't want. So here's toolbars and extensions. Here's search providers. Here's accelerators. Here's tracking protectors. Here's spelling correction languages. So we can access the extensions and the various things that may have been added to our Internet Explorer from the manage add-ons feature. And then finally, Firefox, we drop the menu and we have the add-ons feature right here. And notice one of the first things they do is guide you into getting add-ons that you might want. But we can see the installed extensions right here. Many times this is stuff we actually want, but a lot of times you'll see this particular malware installed in here. So in summary, pop-ups, what do we want to do? Step one, we want to go to our browser and we want to make sure that we've got the pop-up blocker turned on and properly configured, especially if we have some sites that we want to add as extensions. Step two, we're going to go ahead and do some anti- adware. We're going to get rid of that adware. I gave two examples, the free AVG and the super anti-spyware. And there are others for sure. And you may want to just install something like Super Anti-Spyware, the free edition, clean up your system, and then uninstall it. If you're using a antivirus and it's not doing the job for you, you might want to go ahead and uninstall it and then try the AVG product that I mentioned. Maybe someone's told you about another adware removal program. That's great. Give it a try. It's a good second step. Thirdly, by the way, is kind of a bonus. We talked about extensions and add-ons to our browser. This is something you would want to look at even after you've taken these first two steps just to make sure you're aware of what's been added to your browser so that you're aware of those particular tools and you may even disable and uninstall some unwanted tools to make your internet experience much more enjoyable.
Well, Randy, thank you so much for the suggestion on this particular video. I sure hope you found this micro nugget informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.